Hey guys, it's Will with Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Today I am asking you a question, and that's not a question I'm necessarily going to answer. I'll give you my two cents on it, I'll tell you why I was thinking about it, and then I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Also, welcome to all our new subscribers. Uh, we've had a big uptick in subscribers recently, that's super, super cool. Thank you so much. We are now uh, almost at a thousand. That's like our next milestone, because we hit 750, so that's totally insane, because as of like... I don't know, like six months ago maybe i don't we had like 300 subscribers or something like that so yeah it's just been crazy it's been really fun it's been really awesome meeting new people in the comments and having these back and forth and stuff like that so what am i here today to talk about dragon lord hell yeah this is the 88 films release i already reviewed this so if you haven't seen that um i'll put a link in the description of this video or you can just head over to our channel and see my review of the 88 films blu-ray release of jackie chan's 1982 film dragon lord and so what i am here today to ask to you and sort of to the universe and kind of uh, uh, hypothetical and just kind of ponder on myself is, is Dragon Lord a classic Jackie Chan movie? So obviously there are multiple ways you can look at this. A, how do you define a classic movie? B, what are the Jackie Chan classics? And C, what are the different things about Dragon Lord that might make it or not make it a Jackie Chan classic, right? And we also have to consider what it like if you were to think about dragon lord in the context of all films ever made i think most people would say no it is not a classic movie because a lot of people who i've talked to about it and again this is one of those issues that were not issues but one of those questions where like there are a lot of people who say hell yes it's absolutely classic jackie chan and there are a lot of people who say no it has a lot of problems like the romantic subplot is never resolved it's the structure is really messy the mixture of like the violence and the um uh, like the silliness doesn't quite work. Um, Jackie's performance is kind of over the top. Uh, one of the other criticisms of it I've heard, it is more or less the exact same movie as Drunken Master 2. In Drunken Master 2, I think a lot of people would say it's a much better film, so do we really need uh, Dragon Lord if you're just going to watch one of them? I, I, I think, yeah, I think Drunken Master 2 is right here. Yeah, no, there you go. Um, this is an odd little DVD edition that I picked up on eBay um, as part of a lot that I bought. It might be bootleg as hell. I don't honestly know. So if you know, tell me. Is this bootleg as hell? Um, so uh, here's the thing, right? Dragon Lord is kind of, it's a very special movie because it's a movie where I i would argue, and again, like, I, it's been a long, long, long time since I saw The Young Master, and I think I've only seen it, like, once. And, um, like, I really need to go back and, and rewatch a lot of those movies. But, but from my, what I understand and from my kind of perspective, and from having just watched Fearless Hyena uh, recently, too, Dragon Lord is the movie where Jackie Chan, as we know him, essentially was born. Jackie Chan of, like, the big over-the-top insane stunts where you can't believe what you're watching you can't believe people are actually doing that with the insane fight sequences um with like the really dangerous stuff where people are getting hurt and that marriage of that goofy amiable slapstick comedy and that crazy over-the-top action stunt work and so for that alone i think you could say absolutely classic jackie chan movie you can't dispute it however right this came out in 1982 this is really early for, I think, Western audiences who are big Jackie Chan fans. And so this is where you get into this kind of thing of like, I think if you were watching these movies as they were coming out, if you were a fan in Hong Kong, if you were a fan in Japan, if you were a fan in Korea, um, Taiwan, right? These other places where Jackie Chan was already really successful, this would be like this landmark movie to you, this huge milestone in his career and also like a movie that would have blown you away having seen it after having seen his older stuff, right? Now, if you're, you know, like, I, I know people who are big-time Jackie Chan fans from way back in the day in the in the U.S. and Canada and stuff like that, and they talk about coming to Jackie with, like, maybe a police story or, or uh, you know, Armor of God or movies like that. If you're seeing, if you're seeing Police Story and you're seeing Armor of God, you're seeing maybe Police Story 2, Project A, Wheels on Meals, and then you're seeing this movie, this would probably seem more like it's, it's, a, it's an important film because of what it represents in his career if you've gone back and watched all those movies. But if your reference point is Police Story or Armor of God or even Wheels on Meals, right, that Benny Arquita's fight or whatever, and then you go back and watch this, you probably think it's not like classic tier Jackie Chan, but it is an important film in the history of his career. And I think those are important perspectives to bear in mind. I mean, for me, right, like you've heard me talk about this on the channel before maybe, but the first 
Jackie Chan movie I saw in theaters was First Strike, which I think was also the first. I may have seen Rumble in the Bronx at like a sleepover with friends. I don't remember. And so if I did see that, it didn't leave an impression on me as a kid. Whereas when I saw First Strike, I was like, what? This movie's incredible. And then I saw uh, Operation Condor, which is what right here, um, like six months later. And I was just like a Jackie Chan fan. But that was in 1997, right? I wasn't even born when this movie came out. So 15 years later was when I started watching Jackie Chan. So if I, you know, if I watch First Strike and I watch the ladder sequence or like the snowmobile sequence, right? And then I'm watching Operation Condor with that insane stuff at the end with the those big things in the, you know, the bunker. Um, and then I go and watch this movie. I'll be like, oh, it was kind of cool. And like, it's funny. Like I definitely would have found that movie hilarious when I was a teenager, right? Um, and I would have enjoyed it, but I don't, I don't know if I would have been like, that's classic Jackie Chan. So I, I think part of it comes down to perspective. I think part of it comes down to, are you saying it's classic because of how important it is to create his career? Or are you gonna be more stringent and be like, it's not really classic, it's just important. And like, what is the difference there? And so it's, these are just kind of musings I had while I was watching this film again. So I'd be interested in hearing what you think, like is Dragon Lord a classic Jackie Chan movie? If it is, why do you think that? If it isn't, why do you think that? And maybe also like what in your mind, what are, I'm gonna do another video in a couple weeks that I'm prepping right now. Um, the title of which is what are like the God tier Jackie Chan movies? Like the ultimate untouchable best of all time Jackie Chan movies. I'm only gonna do like five to 10. Um, and so like, is that one of those to you? Or is it like the next tier below that? Is it a classic, but not like a classic, classic, super classic? Like, how do you divide Jack? Like when someone has had so many freaking incredible films and so many absolutely classic films and was so hugely influential on cinema all over the world, how do you slice and dice that? I mean, obviously you don't have to, right? But as fans, that's what we do because we love these movies and we love to think about them and talk about them and do this kind of stuff, right? And like, I'm a big music fan too. So I'm like constantly texting my music friends and like, oh, you know, what's like the best? Like I've been texting with um one of my good friends recently a lot about like Alice in Chains and Deftones. I've been like on an Alice in Chains bender and also Deftones is one of my all time favorite bands and they just released a new song. So I've been texting like my brother and one of my good friends being like, oh, what, you know, is, what's better, this album or this album? Or, like this song or this song? Or like right now I'm like, if you're a Deftones fan, my whole thing right now is like, is it the self-titled album or Saturday Night Wrist? Like if you're ranking the Deftones album, those two albums are right next to each other for me in the ranking. Um, and I can never decide which one I like more. So I was texting my brother, like, which is, the, you know, so like, it's just for fun. Like, obviously I'm not trying to like create a definitive answer that we're going to carve into stone, but just, just let me know. So my name is Will. This is Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. I thank you so much for finding us. I thank you so much for subscribing to us, for following us, for commenting on these videos. Um, that's my two cents on Dragon Lord, and we will see you next time. <laughs>